right, everybody. All right, Zane from Really Easy AI. And welcome to uh, a slightly different video. Now, um, if you're new to the channel, uh, I actually have two tracks. I have a, a, I guess you might call it a casual track, a track for folks who aren't really hardcore data scientists or deep into generative AI or any of that stuff, don't want to write code, any of those things, just want to take advantage of the AI that's out there. And then I have a hardcore tech track that is, you know, obviously deeper into this stuff. Uh, generally speaking, I run the non-tech uh, or non-deep tech stuff on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, and then I run the deep tech stuff on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, just in case you're wondering. This is most definitely a non-tech discussion. And that's all it is, is a discussion. I'm not going to pop any code or even break out any interfaces. This is really to get folks up to speed on artificial intelligence for non-technical professionals. And my goal here is to educate you on you know, broad strokes. You make sure that you're armed well enough to understand the terminology when you hear it, um, to be able to uh, discuss it if you need to with folks, or at least intelligently know what they're talking about when they hit you with these terms. Uh, and show you some examples of, of how you might use AI in your workplace. So if you're a non-technical professional and you're interested in artificial intelligence, and didn't know where to start, I'd say this is a good starting point. All right, so let's jump into this. Uh, first and foremost, as always, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate you being here viewing the video. I really do. But anything you do beyond viewing the video, anything, just tapping the like button, for example, is a huge boost on the algorithm and we'll get this out to more folks so they can see it and they can take advantage of it. So please help your fellow uh, professionals. Take a, take a second, click that like button, comment if you want. I'd love to hear your comments and questions and I answer every comment, uh, at least until I get so big I can't do it, which hasn't happened yet. And uh, if you really like the content, subscribe. And if you really, really, really like the content, uh, consider becoming a member. We have two levels, uh, Artificial Narrow Intelligence, level one, $1.99 a month. And uh, that gets you some loyalty badges, some cool emojis, uh, and then discount on merchandise when I hook up the store. Artificial General Intelligence, level two, $4.99 a month, gets you everything from level one plus Priority reply to comments, member-only polls, member shout-outs, photos and status updates of my dogs and stuff, if you're into that. Uh, but most notably, early access to my videos, because I queue my videos up weeks in advance. Uh, so um, today is May 4th, and by the time you're viewing this, it's probably going to be the middle of May sometime. So I queue my, um, queue my stuff up way in advance. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's start with why we're here at all, right? The first thing you need to understand as a non-technical professional, somebody new to AI, is, is try to understand why we're here. And to understand why we're here, we gotta look at our history. It started with the Industrial Revolution. Now, we've actually had four Industrial Revolutions. The first Industrial Resolu Revolution was mechanization, steam and water power. We harnessed the power of water, we got steam engines, uh, locomotives, so on and so forth. We did more mechanization, and that was the really the first big industrial revolution. The second industrial revolution was bought on, brought on by mass production, obviously, a la Henry Ford, Model Ts, that sort of thing, and electricity, right? Thomas Edison. And so that brought on the advent of the second industrial revolution. The third industrial revolution happened kind of started happening in the 60s, really around the 50s to the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, and beyond. Um, and that's when we started getting electronic systems, IT systems, and automation, most notably factory floor automation, where you had um, robots on the factory floor that were doing stuff and uh, you know automating building of products and, and that sort of thing. Very, very cool stuff. And that leads us to the current state. We are at the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution. 
Um, in the fourth industrial revolution, we'll have cyber physical systems. Let me explain. So in the third industrial revolution, we had robots that built cars. But each one of those robots, say on an assembly line, did only what it was supposed to do. It, if you had a robot that was supposed to put doors on, that's all it cared about. It didn't know anything about the robot uh, before it or the robot after it. All it did was put freaking doors on a car. In the cyber physical systems world, that's not the case at all. In that world, the robot has awareness and is aware of what's going on around it. And it is given that awareness and that access to understand what's happening. Now, why is this important? Well, because consider this. Let's say we have a couple of factories, one in Korea, one in Tennessee. And we're selling cars. Some of the models are made in Korea, some are made in Tennessee. As we get sales figures in real time for the sales of the cars, we come to find out um, in real time that the cars that are being made in Korea and coming over aren't selling as well as the cars being made in Tennessee. And that's not because of location, it just happens to be the models they happen to be producing. A cyber physical system, unlike the old system, the old system wouldn't care. It just keep cranking out cars and cars and cars and cars. It doesn't care. A human has to intervene and say, whoa, we need to slow things down. We don't need as many cars coming out of this factory. A cyber physical system would not need that at all. It would be made aware. It would already have awareness of that. And the entire factory in Korea would automatically slow down to adjust to the manufacturing of cars at the appropriate level. So that's the difference between the third industrial revolution and machines we created there and the fourth industrial revolutions and the machines and what they're gonna do there. Uh, of course, part of that and wrapped up in that is artificial intelligence. So keep that in mind as well. So that's all wrapped up in there. By the way, real quick side note, as we go on, I am going to break this up into more manageable chunks. I tend to get pretty wordy. So every, I guess, 20 minutes, I'll just break it up. I'll just stop there and put do another part. Uh, just so you don't have to consume so much all at once. I really only want you to take 15, 20 minutes out of your day to watch each part and eventually consume it all. All right, so let's begin with the definition. What is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence, or AI, is technology that allows machines to learn from information and act like humans. Real simple. Doing things like making decisions and understanding speech without needing step-by-step -step instructions. So in the old days, if we were trying to do something, the old programming models that we had were to write instructions step by step. Everything had to be step by step. Classic if then, right? If this, then do this. Um, artificial intelligence doesn't work like that. Artificial intelligence is able to absorb information and make decisions based on that information. Now, let's explore this a little more. Artificial intelligence, in my mind, is an overly broad term. It does have a specific connotation. It encompasses basically everything. Um, any, anything where you get a human-like system, and that is a lot of different things, uh, you could call it AI. And, and unfortunately, it's an abused term in my mind. But let's go through the history here. So the term AI originated in the mid-1950s. It is a blanket term for all intelligent computing, regardless of what it does. And, and that includes, you know, even narrow things, just as long as they're not just you know, step by pure step by step. The goal is to simulate human intelligence. Early forms of this were simple if then statements. Now that is interesting, right? So the earliest forms of AI, air quotes, um, were simple, if this, then do this, if this, then do this. Artificial intelligence evolved to do more than that, but the early AI systems did have a set of rules. We call it rules-based. It wasn't specifically pure step-by-step. -step. There was a little fuzziness in there, but not a lot. It was basically if-then statements. A classic example of this back in the day would be um, in the medical field. 
you could feed it a set of symptoms and it would use a bunch of rules to say, well, if they have this and this and this and this, then they might have this, right, to get a diagnosis. And it was real simple. It just checked, it looked at the check boxes and said, okay, if that's checked, if that's checked, if that's checked, then they may have, you know, these are some possible outcomes. Pretty basic stuff. Then in the 1960s, as we continue to evolve this concept of artificial intelligence, um, we had a new goal. The goal was to get, to, mach to get machines to learn from and make decisions based on data without a lot of rules. Instead of us saying, here's your rules, and then make a decision, now we're saying, look, here's a bunch of data, I'm not gonna give you a bunch of rules. I want you to take the data and be able to discern things, patterns and so forth. In fact, machines learn through data patterns to solve problems. A perfect early example of that was weather, forecasting weather. Forecasting weather is a form of machine learning. It uses machine learning to take in weather data over time and make a prediction about future weather. Um, and has done so for a very, very, very long time. Now, granted, it's got a lot more sophisticated over time, but at its core, it is just a simple prediction model using machine learning. Takes in a bunch of data and predicts what's going to happen. Then we get to the deepest level called deep learning. This originated in the 1980s. And the goal is to learn from a lot of sample data so it can recognize pictures, words, or sounds by itself. A classic example of this is facial recognition today, right? The facial recognition on your phone actually uses deep learning to memorize your face and then later on recognize your face. Uh, it's a great example of deep learning. Now, those are the three broad levels, right? And artificial intelligence being the broadest. And then you go from artificial intelligence, which, by the way, if it's not machine learning, we refer to it generally, any AI that's not machine learning, as artificial narrow intelligence um, for the most part. Uh, machine learning kind of falls into that too a little bit. But um, we start getting into deeper elements. Um, I won't go too deep into it, but suffice to say, there's a, a lot going on there. Uh, actually, I guess in a way, you could think of all this as the early stages of artificial narrow intelligence uh, evolving into something greater. All right. Let's talk about AI around you, because AI is literally all around you. And I want to give you some examples of this. And then we'll probably stop after the examples and, and start in with part two. So AI is already all around you. Every time you use Google, for example, when you start typing a search term in Google, it uses a type of AI to predict what you might be looking for. It uses machine learning. Based on if the first few letters you type, this AI looks at what lots of other people have searched for that starts with the same letter and suggests the most, the most common searches to you. This helps find what you need faster, even if you're not sure how to spell it or exactly what to search for. How about Netflix? Ever watch Netflix and it suggests movies to you? Well, guess what? That is artificial intelligence. That's machine learning as well. It's doing a prediction. Netflix uses AI to figure out what kinds of shows and movies you like to watch. It looks at your previous choices of what you watched and enjoyed and then predicts and suggest other shows and movies that are similar. This way, the more you watch, the better Netflix gets at recommending things you might like. Why? Because the more data it collects on you, the more it's able to extrapolate a prediction. Just like with weather. The more weather data we have, the easier it is to predict future weather. How about facial recognition? Oh yeah. When you upload a photo on Facebook, it uses AI to look at the faces and figure out who might be in that picture. Now, as we already learned, that's deep learning. It compares these faces to other it has seen in the past photos to see if they match anyone you know. This helps Facebook suggest who you might want to tag in your photos, 
getting better at recognizing your friends the more you tag them. So the more you tag them, it remembers those faces, it stores those faces, and the next time you take a picture, it looks at the faces in the picture, compares them to the faces it knows, and suggests tagging. How about Siri? You have an iPhone, you use Siri, I know I do. That's deep learning, speech. Siri is a smart assistant on Apple devices that you can talk to just like you would to a person. When you ask Siri a question or tell it to do something like send an alarm or send a message, it uses a special kind of technology called deep learning to understand your voice and figure out what you mean. Then Siri quickly responds or does the task you asked for, making it easier to use your device without having to type or tap. Very, very cool. So these are all examples of artificial intelligence that you've been using every day and maybe didn't even realize it. How about um, Tesla? Tesla's self-driving cars use a special method called supervised learning to help the car understand what it sees on the road. It's like learning from flashcards. The car's AI system has shown a lot of pictures where things like cars, people, and street signs, and even animals are marked. This way, the car learns to recognize these things by itself when it's driving, helping it make smart decisions about where to go and what to do. How about Google Sheets? You ever use Google Sheets? Ever use autocomplete? Use it all the time, don't you? Uh, well, guess what? In Google Sheets, the autocomplete feature is designed to enhance your efficiency by predicting and suggesting text based on the content you start entering in a cell. When you type the at sign followed by characters, Google Sheets begins to su suggest relevant content such as names of people or items that have been mentioned or used in your spreadsheet or connected Google services. This feature is part of Google's smart fill capabilities, which use a form of AI to recognize patterns or common entries. It not only speeds up data entry, but also helps reduce errors by suggesting accurate completions based on existing information. This is especially useful in large data sets or when you are collaborating with others and it ensures consistency in the data entered. So it's a prediction model as well. Do you use Zoom at all? Zoom has a really cool feature. I just got done doing a series on it. So if this is your first time watching one of my videos, go back and look at the series I just did on, on the Zoom AI companion and all the stuff it does. It's pretty incredible. Well, the Zoom AI companion enhances productivity and communication in virtual meetings by intelligently automating several aspects of the meeting process. For example, it automatically generates a detailed summary of your discussions, capturing key points and action items, which helps in maintaining continuity and clarity post-meeting. It actually sends you a summary. It's pretty sick. The AI also assists in composing messages and emails by suggesting contextually appropriate content based on the discussion, thus streamlining follow-ups. This not only saves time, but also ensures that communications are consistent and aligned with the meeting's outcomes. Yeah, the AI companion is super cool. I really like it. It has some very cool features in it. It's not always a home run, don't get me wrong, but it's seriously cool. If you are using Zoom and you're not using the AI companion, you need to start using it. All right, all right, boys and girls, this is a good place to stop. Um, it's been almost 20 minutes. It's about 18 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stop here, and the next part we'll pick up with AI key terms. So hopefully you enjoy this in smaller bite-sized chunks, and we'll pick up with AI key terms at the next session. This is Zane. I'll see you next time.